This is Ryan from MMA Viking kicking off our second podcast here. Uh, again, here with Daniel Schlander, a.k.a. Spider Pig Begins. And we also have a special guest today with Mikel Parlo, who is a few days away from a uh, uh, return to Bellator in the middleweight tournament starting this Saturday. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Very good. Cool. Mikhail, maybe we can uh, start start with you. I know this is a cutting weight uh, week for you. Uh, are you already out uh, in Connecticut, like uh, at the event and getting ready, or are you still uh, in your home base there of Las Vegas? I'm still uh, in Las Vegas in uh, in my coach's uh, home, just uh, relaxing and refreshing some stuff tonight on the on the on the pads. Just uh, taking it easy. Cool. Talk about your your stay there. I mean, you've been in Vegas for three or four months now. Who who are you training with, and and what's going on there? Um, I train with uh, Extreme Couture first of all, um, and uh, sometimes I go down to Drysdale Jiu Jitsu, but uh, I mostly go there uh, because my uh, my stand up coach is located there. Um, that's uh, James McSweeney. So that's the two two gyms I I go to over here in Vegas. Great. And what are you picking up from uh, a guy like James McSweeney? We've actually seen him out here in Sweden a a couple times, and it seems like he's really stepping in nicely into a a coaching role. Yeah. Uh, well, he he has that uh, more like uh, Dutch Dutch style kickboxing. Um. I think it's uh, he's very creative compared to uh, some of the other striking coaches I've been with, um, and uh, has some some special ways to to make you uh, learn. Um, but I think he's really good, and I think he's uh, made me a better fighter. Yeah, and your your background, I mean, I guess from from watching you fight, you seem to have almost like a wrestling base, but. I mean, you definitely have the power and like to strike. Uh, talk a bit about your your background in martial arts or sports in general. Um, well, when I was 12 years, that was the first time I was uh, doing martial arts. I started doing kickboxing when I was uh, 12, and I did that for two years. And uh, after that, I had a little break, and then I started doing MMA. So actually, I never wrestled. Uh, all the wrestling I pretty much know is uh, over here from America, and and the, uh, yeah, the stuff I do is is from uh, my coach Dennis Davis. Cool. So, how much weight have you cut for this fight, or are you going to cut? Uh, it's gonna be. I started out like like uh, 205, and uh, now I'm down to 200. So it's going to be 15 pounds I cut. So it's not so much. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Because, yeah, if you cut too much, it's just you lose the advantage anyway because it's just too much. Yes. So some people cut a lot. Some people start 30 pounds over, but uh, that's not something I believe in. So, yeah, I don't do that. Cool. I wanted to... Uh... Uh, ask about your last uh, fight, the uh, Sultan Aleyev, and I, I just watched it again to kind of refresh my memory on that bout. Can you yeah. talk about what went wrong in that fight? Well, I think first of all, my my training for this fight was wrong. I uh, I emphasized too much on lifting weights, which uh, make me very slow and and like not not mobile. Usually I move my head a lot and try to be unpredictable and and for this fight I I could see afterwards that I was very stiff and uh, yeah he kind of threw me off too because I didn't think he would try to strike with me at all um, but he he kind of did try to pick me from the outside you know with the jab and stuff like that uh, but it was a very dif- disappointing fight for me and and I think. Uh, I learned a lot from it. Yeah, do you think you maybe, I mean, underestimated 
a Sultan or or was it just the uh, wrong game plan? I don't feel like I under, underestimated him. Um, I just feel like I really thought he was going to try to mostly take me down and uh, that I would be able to uh, to get in on him in the stand-up. But he was so good at at um, cutting angles and, and kind of I felt like he was running a little bit from me, um, which kind of uh, <laughs> annoyed me. I got in the fight, I got a little annoyed and I was like, ah, you know, frustrated. How can I get a hold of this guy? Um, but like I said, I, I believe that um, if you look at my, my fight before, I was much more uh, moving with my head, much more mobile and fast. Whereas in this fight, I was too stiff and upright and just standing straight in front of him. So I think uh, for this fight, it's going to be different. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, from watching the fight, I know Zoltan, he, he seemed like he landed a jab, I don't know, 15 seconds in right off the bat, and it seemed like you never really were yourself uh, yeah, yeah. after that. Um, so what did it feel like to lose? It was, I mean, your first loss, you didn't lose as an amateur and hadn't lost as a pro. Like, what, what do you, what was your game plan after that on how to get back on track? Um, yeah, it felt really disappointing. I felt mostly disappointed in myself because I actually felt like I had the opportunity to finish him in the third round and I kind of uh, didn't uh, grab the moment. Um, so I was very disappointed, but, um, you know, after that, I just went home and looked at what I was doing wrong and changed some things up. And, uh, I think that, that, uh, it's going to change a lot for me for this fight. Um, one, uh, I think the only time I've seen you fight in, in person was, uh, the Royal Arena two bout. Uh, against uh, Seaman Carlson, and I think that was one of the most like electric crowds I've seen, and one of the biggest celebrations after a victory. Would you say that was your highlight of your career so far? I wouldn't say it was my my best performance. It was definitely, like you said, a great atmosphere and and a very electric fight. But I wouldn't say it was my best performance. I feel like from that fight. And then uh, my first fight in Bellator and my second, which I lost, I feel like those three fights was uh, was bad for me. I was I was like I said, doing some things wrong, um, and and after the loss, it kind of made me go back to my roots and 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 train the way I used to. So what's the scene like, the MMA scene like in Denmark? Because you had Royal Arena, but they. They ceased existing right now, but there's the European MMA show right down there. Yeah. Is, is it a big scene? Is it like a lot of amateurs and? Um, I mean, it's growing definitely. It's not huge, but I, I'm pretty sure their next event is gonna be the same place as uh, Royal Arena was, and uh, that holds uh, up to I think six thousand people. Um, so. If they're going to be able to fill that up, and I know they made a, a TV deal with, uh, I think it's Viaset. Um, so I think it's it's growing um, slowly but steady. And and there's a lot of uh, fighters coming up too, it seems. What do you, um, I know the big fight they have on the card is this Dane versus Dane battle with uh, Nicholas Dalby and Morten Dursa. How do yeah. you break down that fight? Well, I used to, Nicolas Dalby, is, uh, I used to be in the same uh, team as him. Um, and I would say his uh, strength is, uh, he's very quick and he's very, um, he has very good cardio. He never stops. Um, I think uh, Martin, he, he, uh, he's been in the bigger fights. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, it's hard to say. It's, it's a very good fight, I think. It's it's going to be a great fight. Um, and I, I can't really say who's going to win. Um, it's, uh, it's very hard to say. 
Mm. Yeah, we saw mm. Morton at the zone when he fought Asan and Jai. And it was a tough yeah. fight. He really gave Asan a run for his money there. So he, yeah. He impre- really impressed me in that fight. Yeah, me very, too. Very solid fighter. And that's why that's why I believe that 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 this is not going to be um, easy for Nicolas at all. Uh, Morton is very tough and and he's very uh, endurant too. And uh, I think his uh, wrestling has gotten better. He was over here, I know, for a month, working mm-hmm. on his rest. Uh, and I think that would be one of the key factors for him beating Nicolas is. Uh, not just trying to stand up with him, but take him down and round and pound him and wear him out a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what his strategy is, but that's uh, what I think would be a good strategy. Okay. Great. Um, did you? Are you a, an MMA fan in general? Do you follow all the fights and watch all the UFCs and other Bellator cards? Uh, I try to, to watch as much as possible, but uh, I, I don't get to watch them all, and there's fighters that I don't know, but um, I try to watch as much as I can, and I enjoy watching. So, yeah, I would say I'm a fan. Cool. Did you see the the card last Wednesday? Did you watch Martin Campman fight? Yeah, yeah, I did. Talk about that, that bout. What, what did you think? I know Martin lost. It was a great fight, but... Mm-hmm. What did you think when you were watching that fight, and what did you think was going to happen? Well, at first, uh, I thought Martin did really well. I, I think he did the right thing to try and and uh, take him down and, and wear him out a little bit, because I think that's where he's stronger than Carlos. Um, but I think he kind of, uh, how do you say, he used too much energy. He gassed him, he wore himself out. Instead of... Uh, if he didn't get the takedown, he would cry, kind of try to force it all the time instead of uh, shifting to another takedown or maybe bailing on it and, and uh, trying to dirty box him a little bit. So he would sit on his knees and, and try to get that takedown all the time, which I think wore him out. Um, so, yeah, it just seemed like he kind of got too tired in round three and and then Carlos could get him. What have you learned from uh, Martin? I know you guys trained a while. I don't know how extensive it was, but I know there's been several pictures put out of you guys together uh, training. But how much have you guys really spent uh, time working out in the gym together? Um, For this fight, we didn't really work together because I think um, Martin, he kind of tried to get some sparring partners that were more similar to Carlos, like tall tall and skinny. And that's not really my body type, so uh, for this fight, we didn't uh, train uh-huh. so much together. Okay. Um, talk so, about your next... Or go ahead, Daniel. No, I was just thinking about the other Nordic fighter on, on that card. Uh, Poppy. Did you see Poppy's fight? It was, it was on, uh, on the undercard, of, I think last fight on the undercard. Oh, no, I didn't get to see that. I saw, um, what's his name, the tall Yuken. Yeah, Magnus, see them blood. I saw him uh, Saturday, but I didn't get to see Papi Abedi's fight, no. no. Did you watch it, Ryan? I haven't seen, it's oh. sad, I haven't seen Papi's uh, fight yet, but I definitely saw Magnus's. Yeah, no, no Papi had a good performance. I think it was up until the third round when he got uh, knocked out. It was probably his best performance in the in the octagon so mm-hmm. far. He he had very good judo takedowns that he u- utilized throughout the first two rounds. The only thing that was a bit bad for him was that he lost top control, so uh, Andrews could get up, uh, mm-hmm. get up, get up too much, and that I think made Papi tired to just have to take him down uh, all the time. But yeah, so in the third round he got caught with like. I didn't really see what it was, but I think it was like an uppercut or a hook, and that stunned him. And then he went for the for the takedown, and then and then it got stuffed. And then uh, Andrews just landed a bunch of hooks, and uh, and ref stopped him, herped in, and uh, and stopped the fight. But up up until then, it was a really good fight for Poppy. Yeah, so I, I think he can be proud I, of that performance. 
I didn't get to see it, but I did get uh, from uh, Yukin that uh, Papi Abedi lost because after his fight, he was talking about he wanted to face the guy that uh, that uh, won against Papi. Yeah. I think yeah. that would be a good fight if they put that together. I think Jukin could really, he could really pose a, a big threat to Andrews. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I, I think. That's smart. Like, I mean, I'm not a fighter, but I mean, I think if I want a bout like that, I would pick a guy like Dylan Andrews instead of like calling like for the title. I know you can won't get a title shot, but it seems like to take gradual steps in and the guys you're facing is much smarter than reaching too high uh, too soon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I guess the bummer for Magnus is he had the only submission all the way through until the main event, right? Yeah. So he's sitting on 50,000 <laughs> bucks. And then uh, Pettis is like kicking away at Henderson. It's on the feet. It's good, right? And then uh, the, the arm bar slipped in there and that, that was it. Yeah, such a bummer. But yeah, it was good that he got a, a short stoppage or a fast stoppage because before this fight, he was actually injured a bit. Uh, he had hurt his rib, like I think like two or three weeks before the fight. So he was on the fence before the fight if he was even going to fight because he, he wasn't sure if he could. I don't think he trained any grappling for like, I think he had one like grappling session leading up to the fight, like the weeks before. Um, but then he just decided that it's do or die, so I'm just going to, I don't want to wait anymore because, yeah, his last fight got canceled because of a eye injury or, a, yeah, he got cataract. But, yeah, so he decided to just go for broke. And luckily it, it worked out this time. And he got a quick stoppage, so I think he'll heal up a bit now and then, uh, yeah, look looks to take on Andrews. Yeah, I love that, that call-out. Uh, did you see any other fights, uh, Mikel, from the 164 card this last weekend or anything you remember about fights over the last week? Hmm. Yeah, well, I was... Uh, yeah, I saw, I, saw the, I saw the whole uh, uh, prelim and main card for the 166. So, yeah, I pretty much saw all the fights... Uh, I think uh, it surprised me a little bit that uh, Ben Rothwell, I thought he looked a little better on the feet than he usually does. Um, and I was surprised, of course, that uh, Pettis won. Uh, that's always like new champ. It's always exciting. Yeah, yeah. I really like Rothwell's Guida style movement there in the third round. Was, oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, that that's a guy that uh, he almost uh, made uh, Chad Mendes look tired before he kicked him in the in the groin. <laughs> that's a shame that he gave him that break because I think uh, Chad Mendes was kind of freezing because uh, Clay Guido was so busy doing nothing, just moving <laughs> and making him like, oh shit, what is he gonna do? Uh, so yeah, yeah. But Clay's hair was a little. Tied back for this. Oh, no, it wasn't. I was thinking the hair. Benson tied his hair back. I was oh, thinking yeah. maybe, maybe that's maybe that's his downfall. Or maybe it was that <laughs> they knew about his toothpick this time. So he, yeah. they probably checked real hard for that. That might yeah, have been yeah. a factor, too. Yeah. So no toothpick. Uh, Mikael, have you ever thought about having a toothpick in your mouth during a fight? Uh, I never thought about it even <laughs> when I saw that he... Uh, that he had one, I was uh, very, very amazed. Like, wow, that's uh, it shows a lot of uh, how do you say it? Yeah, he must be very confident going into a fight if he's gonna have a toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, the round I liked, and I, I watched it again this this morning, was the first round of the Dustin Poirier Eric Cope fight. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. Was, fight. That's that must him. have been quite tight. Yeah, I really thought he had a triangle. It looked really tight. I, and then he got it again. That was the weird part. <laughs> then he went yeah. right back into the triangle once he got out. Yeah. But yeah, he must have been like, 
yeah, his brain wasn't probably that fueled with oxygen at that moment, so <laughs> it didn't function <laughs> properly right there. But yeah, yeah, well, that was a great fight, really good yeah. fight. Yeah, that's really high level, high level really, uh, grappling. I really, I really like uh, Dustin Poirier. The first time I, I saw that uh, saw him was on on this uh, documentary, Fight Bill, I think it's called. Yeah. Never since that I kind of followed him because I thought he seemed like a really good kid and and uh, he just seems very tough. Yeah, that was great. I think background into the the life of a a fighter. What do you do outside of of fighting? You're you're locked up there in Vegas. Are you are you the only guy? Are you there? Like, did you bring your dog? Do you have a girlfriend? What what goes <laughs> down there? Uh, I have a girlfriend, but she's not here right now. Um, so pretty much, I live uh, with uh, my coach Dennis Davis in his apartment. And uh, there's not much to do. Uh, I train and I eat and I sleep and I watch uh, movies on uh, Netflix. <laughs> That's about it. Is that better for you than being back in in Denmark where there's like there's distractions? You kind of like this isolated camp? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's been good because I've been able to just keep to myself and focus a lot and and on the same time, I, I live with my coach, so he can be on me all the time and, and tell me if he saw something I was doing wrong. And yeah, I think it's been really good, actually, even though, of course, I miss my family, friends, and my girlfriend. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about Brian Rogers. Yeah. And he's kind of like, I, I know you're one of the more athletic, athletic guys and we see you do backflips after you knock guys out but it seems like he's got a similar build to him and maybe similar power to you how, how do you break down this fight um well i think you're right it could be like uh, two two trains uh colliding head on but um i think that's that's his game he just uh he's very wild and it's almost like as soon as uh, it's almost like he has a radar, and as soon as you step in within the zone of his radar, he just starts firing. So um, I can't really talk about my game plan, but um, I think it's gonna be a good fight. Yeah, he's a real power puncher. He's a, yeah. a lot to deal with. He just keeps coming forward. So, yeah, yeah, he just keeps coming forward, and and sometimes he has his hands very low. Um, so I hope that's going to be an advantage to me. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, uh, Andreas Spong? Yeah, I know him, uh, from the times I've been here before and from now. Uh, sometimes he comes in and train the same place as I do. Um, and yeah, he, he's, uh, yeah, he's a friend of mine. He's a nice guy and everything, so I think it's good that we're on the opposite uh, side of the bracket. Yeah, so maybe we'll see you guys uh, in in the finals. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you think, um, I mean, looking at the, I know there's been a change up in the, I mean, the overall lineup in the card, and it seems like you might have maybe the one of the favorites of the tournament in the first round. Is that how you see your first opponent? Or do you have eyes on other guys in the field? Or do you even look ahead? I, I have actually, I haven't even looked at other guys, but I agree with you. Um, he is uh, kind of a favorite, and I think he's one of the toughest uh, fights you could have in the tournament. Um, but I'm kind of glad that that that's the first round because that way you know take that and and move on and then uh, maybe the rest will be easy <laughs> yeah. when you uh i know these bellator tournaments you get a hundred thousand dollars if you win is that like a motivating factor or is that just extra gravy on the on the side um to me it it it's, it's really doesn't really matter to me um, 
I found out very early in my career that uh, money is not a motivating factor for me. And I think if, if it is, I think uh, you're in the wrong business. I, I don't think it's uh, good for fighters to have that as a motivation. Of course, it's good because then you can live and train and you can invest more money into training and maybe hire uh, someone to help you even more. Um, but I don't really think about the money. To me, it's it's all about, you know, I love to do it and, and I want to show everybody how good I am. And it's kind of the... Or it's kind of hard to earn any like solid solid money in uh, as a fighter yeah yeah it is hard it is hard so have, how have you dealt with that in the past have you had like side jobs or do you have a side job now or do you just focus on uh -huh. fighting i used to uh i used to have uh yeah work full time and then train once a day um and then i started making a little more money and uh, then I got some sponsors. I have a, a, my, my biggest sponsor, BetSafes, is, uh, is pretty much the reason why I'm able to train full time. Okay. So they, uh, they, they helped me out a lot. So when was that when you quit your day job and just focused on fighting? I think uh, that was for like after my seventh fight or something like that. So for the three last fights, um, I've been I've been uh, training full time. How much of a difference do you feel that that has made to make that move? Um, I feel it's a big difference. You you have a lot more um, time on your hands to do all the stuff you need to do. Um, yeah, I think it's it's made a big difference. It's, and, and I need I need to to train full time in order to compete with the the guys I'm competing with now. That's how I feel. Yeah. What was your daytime job that you quit for this? I was uh, I was a carpenter, so that was a little hard. You know, it, it was a lot of physical work, a lot of demolition work, and and like physical work. So. I would do that eight hours every day, and then I go and practice in the evening. And some days I even practice right after work, and then practice in the evening again. Yeah, is that why you're a Clay Guida fan? Because <laughs> he's a carpenter too. Uh, 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 <laughs> why don't you no. have a nickname? Um, or do you have one? No, I, I was never, uh, I always thought to myself that maybe one day if I get good enough, then maybe someone will find a good nickname to me. And I think also sometimes you need to get a little more set in uh, your style, have a little more fights so people can see what kind of fighter you are. Um, but yeah, I was never given one and I never felt like I needed one, but maybe one day... I'll get one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you guys can. Maybe you guys can come up with one. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll base it on the next fight. We'll, yeah. we'll look at your the new Mikel Parlo 2.0. Uh, <laughs> now that you're full time training. So it, it sounds like you're sponsored by a betting company. We're sponsored by a betting company. If you had to place a bet on. Uh, this next fight, how do you think it ends? Um, it can end uh, any way. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bet on any way uh, that it's gonna end, but I would bet on me as a winner. Okay, take the safe. I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna win any way I can. If he's giving me a submission, I'll take it. If uh, he give me the opening to knock him out, I'll take it, and. Uh, if the opening is not there and I have to grind him out, I go to the decision. Okay, so only one submission, right, in your history. Yeah. So I yeah. think I'd put my money probably on a KO for the Dane. <laughs> yeah. And how's my betting track record, Daniel? Yeah, it's very solid. I wouldn't go against it. Okay. I, I, I'll second that. Okay. KO. Kale Paulo. Yes. Right. 
Great, Mikhail. Well, thanks for your time today, and thanks for joining us um, on the whole show. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about these cards, and we touched on them. Uh, I guess the last thing I, I just want to mention before we uh, get out of here is we do have a stand-up war uh, for photo gallery that's up, um, all exclusive, so go check that out. And then uh, Christopher... Uh, Jonasen is starting to put up some Nordic MMA uh, fight flashbacks, which are really cool little features. So um, we're putting up some unique content you won't see um, anywhere else. And uh, thanks, Daniel. This Saturday, we got Karelia Fight 9 in Amantra, Finland. And then, of course, this Saturday, uh, we got our special guest here. Uh, along with Swede Andreas Spong representing the Nordic Fighters on this Bellator 9 tournament in Connecticut. So, Mikkel, uh, thanks again for your time today, and we wish you all luck, all the luck uh, this Saturday in your bout against Brian Rogers. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks, Mikkel. Thanks, yeah, Daniel. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Latifa Hour. <laughs>